Hi, I finally managed to write some firmware that seems to do what I want for the lighting project. So I've been working on this uh, on and off for the past couple of weeks and the PWM module on this PIC just doesn't quite do what I need it to do and there are some silicon bugs and um, some features in the datasheet which don't quite operate in the, in the way that it describes. So in the end I've um, discarded the PWM modules and sort of written some timer routines that are going to create the waveforms that we need for our dimmer circuit. I also soldered up the PCB for the demo board. Um, so the mains is going to connect to this board and the mains powered lamp is also going to connect to this board and then we've got the interface to the board down here on this side. And then we've got lots of probing points all over the board so that we can um, have a look at the waveforms and make sure everything's doing what it should do. But I was having to think really about the best way to demonstrate this for the video. Now hopefully you've watched my video on isolation transformers. If not, I'll link to it above. Um, but although it is possible to probe differentially across, for example, the MOSFETs on this board that are going to be riding the AC waveform, it's not necessarily the safest method and it is very easy to create a really hazardous situation with the isolation transformer. Um, so you really have to understand what you're doing. Um, and I was thinking of a safer way of doing it and that is with a differential probe. So the guys at Banggood were kind enough to send through one uh, for me to uh, use in this video. Um, so what I thought we'd do is today we'd have a look at this probe itself and see if we can have a look inside and then in the next video we will try and power up this board and have a look at the waveforms properly. So this is the product we've been sent through. It's the Mixig DP10013 and it's currently retailing on the Banggood website for £131. So I'll put the link down below. I highly recommend that you have a look at this device because actually this is a really good price for a differential probe. And if you are doing any projects that uh, involve mains and you want to have a look on your oscilloscope, it's well worth getting yourself one of these differential probes. And the specifications are pretty good. Um, it's got a bandwidth of 100 megahertz um, and it's got two attenuation ranges on this particular model. So 50 and 500 times attenuation, which basically means you can differentially probe either 130 volts or 1300 volts. And what that really means in reality is between these two probes you can apply up to 1300 volts and between these two probes and your oscilloscope mains earth uh, the maximum voltage that you can have this floating up at is uh, 1000 volts as written here on the uh, on the device. Um, the rest of the specs are um, pretty straightforward and what is nice is that it's powered by a USB connector on the bottom. Um, I'm not a big fan of devices that have batteries um, in them for this kind of thing because often you'll pack it away for six months and then when you come back to it the batteries have leaked and ruined your device so um, this one's got a USB connector on the bottom and you just plug this in uh, for example into your oscilloscope so most will have a USB port on the front and then just plug in the, uh, the BNC connector and you can start probing. So what you get in the box are a range of connectors here so you've got these uh, nice probes that you can hook around a component leg or some wires um, and you just use the, the button here to, um, to latch onto something. You get a couple of alligator clips which have got really strong springs in them so they're not going to accidentally fall off. Uh, and then you get a couple of traditional probes that you can either use with just a small amount of the probe exposed like that or you can pull off the end and probe more traditionally or poke it into uh, four millimeter uh, banana jacks. Then you get a USB lead for powering the device and then of course you get the device itself which is really nicely built. Uh, you've got a couple of USB ports so one passes through power um, and then you've got these uh, probes which have silicone leads so everything feels really nice high quality. Um, so what we're going to do now is see if we can open this up although it's looking uh, pretty well sealed so we may not be able to. So here's the inside of the differential probe and this is basically acting like a high spec instrumentation amplifier that can tolerate a very high voltage differentially on its inputs and also uh, provides some means of current limiting uh, from the input to the output so that you don't get an electric shock from the um, output terminals. So there's not actually any means of isolation as such although there is a, an isolating DC to DC converter. Uh, the way it achieves its safety is by way of this resistor ladder um, so effectively we've got five 1 meg ohm resistors on each leg and then overall that provides sort of 10 meg impedance into the, the main op amp on the input here. So this is an analog device's ADA4817 and this has uh, FET inputs, so very high input impedance tolerance 
uh, and it's also reasonably high spec, so uh, very low noise on its inputs. And then basically all it does is um, switch between a couple of gain resistors on this op-amp here, and then it effectively just buffers that out to the, um, the output to your oscilloscope. So what this DC to DC converter is doing is basically eliminating a ground loop between the BNC connector to your op-amp and the USB connector here. So um, if you've got it connected to your oscilloscope, um, USB connector, there's not really an issue, but if this is, for example, connected to a PC or another USB supply, you could have a big ground loop between your oscilloscope uh, and this USB lead, which could uh, really interfere with your readings. But yeah, the, uh, overall the construction looks really good. We've got a couple of uh, trimmer capacitors here, presumably for compensation of your inputs, but these are preset. Uh, so I'm not going to fiddle with those, but uh, overall, yeah, the, the construction is absolutely fine. There is a shield that goes on the top here to shield the, uh, the high impedance section here, uh, and then the front cover just clips on top. So the configuration to use it with your oscilloscope is really quite straightforward. Um, if you've got a, an oscilloscope like this, you can literally just plug it into the USB connector on the front to power it, and into one of the uh, inputs with the BNC connector. I've set this to times 500 attenuation. You can just about see the um, the button is glowing green. Uh, the lights in here are very bright, so um, it's completely washing out the button. Um, and then on any modern scope, you can set the attenuation uh, to a whole range of values, and the Vigor is no exception. So you can set it to times 500, and that means that all of our scaling uh, when you do the measurements is all correct. And you can see here it's reading an RMS mains voltage of 240 volts, uh, well 250 volts nearly, which is accurate. Uh, I just probed the socket, um, and you can see here I'm probing the mains directly uh, and not creating any hazard. And I'm also able to touch the BNC connectors and not get an electric shock. Um, so it's doing exactly as claimed. So there are some limitations that you need to be aware of. It's advertised as a 100 megahertz probe. So the minus 3 dB point is at 100 megahertz, and almost certainly the electronics in here is capable of that measurement. But the leads here are fixed. So you've got this long lead length, which means that you're never going to be able to probe a 100 megahertz signal and effectively measure it on your oscilloscope. So it is slightly a shame that the leads are fixed, but you could open it up as I did. Um, and you could replace these with some connectors or something like that, so you can uh, do some measurements at high frequency if you need to. Um, an example of that would be if you're probing a switch mode power supply uh, that's running at high frequency, you might want to uh, be able to probe at 100 megahertz. Um, but for general purpose use, uh, this is going to be absolutely fine. As I mentioned at the start of the video, um, this is actually a very keenly priced piece of equipment, so um, the next similar model that I found on the internet uh, is roughly around double the price. It does have very slightly better specifications, uh, but not significantly so. So if you did have the budget of twice this, I would actually recommend that you buy two of these and you'll be able to probe sort of any area of the circuits that you're working on if you're doing any kind of mains powered device. So if you are into your power supply design and that kind of thing, I definitely recommend you get at least one of these just to make the whole situation safer. As I said, you can do it with isolation transformers, uh, but you've got to really be careful with what you're doing. With this, you only have to worry about mains being present on these two leads and all of your test equipment is you know, on the safe side of um, the connection. So definitely a recommended investment. I think I'm going to buy another one of these um, because having two is really worthwhile so you can uh, probe your, um, I don't know, your differing signals on a switch mode power supply, that kind of thing. Um, it just allows you to safely probe your circuit. So um, yeah, the links are down below to Banggood. Um, I think they're selling it for £130 at the moment, but um, don't forget to have a look for discount codes on the Banggood website. Um, you're likely to get at least 10 to 15% off that price if you use one of those discount codes. So I hope that video was useful. We're going to use this in anger on the lighting project in the next video. So until next time, thanks for watching.